can you give us an update on the technical adjustment in implementing monetary policy that the Fed made earlier this year um, when it decoupled the interest on excess reserves rate from the upper bound of the target range? And have you been happy with that adjustment? And do you see the need to make another such adjustment in the near future? Um, so we, we've said that we would use our tools to assure that the federal funds rate trains, trades within the target range. And the principal tools we, we use have been interest on excess reserves and, and then at the bottom end, the re reverse repo facility. So we, uh, in June, when we raised rates, we only raised the interest on excess reserves by 20 basis points and raised the range by 25. And that moved federal funds sort of back into the range. Uh, it worked and it was successful. The federal funds rate traded in the low 190s, uh, well within the range. Um, we may we may do that again. You know, we again we have our tools and we will use them. Uh, we think it's principally a function just of um, of a number of things, but particularly high treasury supply and uh, which is showing up in repo rates and then showing up in, in Fed funds as well. So. We don't see it as a, as, a, as a big problem. We see it as a problem we can address with our tools, and we'll use them if we have to. Hi, Chairman. Uh, Courtney Brown from Axios. Um, last month, the CEA outlined a different way to calculate wage growth. Uh, has the Fed looked at that at all, and what are you seeing in terms of non-wage-based compensation? So I, I wouldn't comment on a CEA paper, and I, I would imagine they probably wouldn't comment on our stuff either. But uh, I would just say this. So I, I am familiar with the, with the question and the work. You know, we, we, look, we look at a range of indicators of wages, and I think uh, the, the broader the better. You really, in a perfect, a perfect wage measure would also include benefits because a lot of compensation these days shows up in the form of benefits rather than wages. So I think it's right to, to choose those broader ones. But they're kind of all telling the same story right now. If you look at the, the principal four that we look at, we look at a whole range of wage and benefit cost indicators. They, they are all now showing wages and benefits around 3% growth, right? Clustered around 3%. That's a full percentage point higher than it was five years ago. That's a good thing. Then the question, the other question is, what about inflation? You know, if you're, if you're looking for real wage increases, you've got to ask inflation. And there, you have to pick an inflation measure. Some people pick CPI. We, of course, pick personal consumption expenditures because we think it's a little better measured, it's a little broader, and it tends to run a little bit lower as well, but that's not why we pick it. We just think it's more accurate. And that the trend there is running around 2%. So if wages are running at, at rough, wages and benefits running at roughly 3% uh, uh, and, and inflation running at around 2%, uh, PCE headline inflation is at 2.3%, PCE core is at about 2 and I think we see that the you know the uh, the, the temporary uh, increase in headline inflation as being a function of oil prices probably, and we expect inflation to go back down two percent. So we think of that as two percent. That's how we think about it. That I hope that helps. <clears throat> 